All right, we are recording. We're live. This is live action. Live action. I oh, <laughs> it's this, right? Yeah, I think it's that. Look, he's learning. Gator. Um, yeah, so it's almost a car. It's coming it together. It kind of looks, it has the shape of a car, which means like it's basically a car. It's basically a car. Um, yeah, basically we've been working on the front end doing an aluminum structure as I jump across, but yeah, just making all the headlight mounts, the radiator mounts, the oil cooler mounts, all that stuff. So I'll show you how it works under the hood. A little... This is my current hood. Wow, that is. Yeah, it's it's high end. It's quality. Hey, that was some like shatterproof plastic from McMaster. So. Oh, okay. Yeah. So. Surprise, surprise! Let's take it off, Chris. First of all, let's take a let's take a second and look at this splitter. The splitter is going to look so cool when you see the end plates that are about to go. Yeah. On. So I have 3D end plates that are going to come up, and they got nice vortex generators and stuff like that. So, I'm leaving a nice flat spot for that, and then I did the casual five inch grid life roll. Yeah, it looks great Just though. It's gonna look awesome. It's gonna look super awesome. Yeah. Um, yeah, but front end. So basically, the old radiator used to sit like in the engine, and you would have to like it basically touched the blow off valve, and the fan would sit underneath the oil cooler and underneath the blow off valve, and it was just an absolute nightmare. So when I have my street car, I deleted AC. Um, so with that newfound room. I basically tilt, kept the radiator rear point and just tilted everything forward so that way I can duct nicely through the kidneys and then I have all of this area to evacuate all the air. So this is really going to drop the rear pressure differential so I'll get more air flow through the radiator and then we'll go out the AJ Hartman thing. But it also helps me just be able to work on things like yeah. the tensioner I stripped out because like who puts a Torx that's like you need a breaker bar this long to do it it's terrible yeah the belt tensioner um, was such a nightmare on this car but yeah i literally didn't have to do anything i just just like oh i put a wrench here now and i i take it out yeah. and then i put the belt back on so show everybody let me stand back a little bit okay it's, everybody's gonna be like wait 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 how did you do that so just go ahead and rip off rip it off rip what what am i ripping off the bumper so they can see how we're doing all uh, this okay this well, is really it's like we're it's like we're take my top off. Yeah, we're taking. Like, whoa. Whoa. whoa! Holy cow! I, I don't have enough singles on me for this. Oh yeah. So basically, like my bumper to Mike's, like this is just a gutted bumper. Like, I wish my bumper was that light. Like it, it maybe weighs a few pounds, but it's basically just the skin, um, which is really nice because all the mounting is just done there. Like this is just a beauty cover, and for like. Splitter, like everyone wants to like quick disconnects, but I don't like the look of them sticking way out and you don't want to mount them. To well, this. yours mounts so well on the top that it kind of stays in place because it actually fits. Yeah, and so like now you have, you know, the behind the scenes, so. Oh man, this is we, some thumbnail action actually though. Wow, so I mean, look at this thing. It, the, the entire front end was replaced with the aluminum tube structure. Yeah, so we basically stole this idea from the new NASCARs. Yeah, um, thank you PRI. Yeah, and uh, yeah, so this used to be a whole plastic front piece and then it had the huge metal bash bar and I basically got rid of all of that. Um, went to an aluminum tube structure and then made stanchions for the oil cooler, for the radiator, for the headlights, everything like that. Um, then we're going to have drop downs for the splitter that will be welded to there and then we'll have quick releases at the bottom. So everything's literally mounted down to the bars. You can see the headlight, headlight brackets. Yeah. Um, I didn't look this way. So you're going off the factory crash structure attachment. Yeah. So I had no frame changes or anything like that. Like the four bolts or the eight bolts, I guess, that hold on each side of the crash structure. I just undid those. This is like a, a race car, like tube front end, but like instead of doing tubes, I did we got rectangles. Squares. Rectangles. Mm -hmm. You get your. Um, yeah. I mean, it's just lighter. It's easier to mount everything, and like. Yeah. I mean. Just like. Yeah, no, it's gonna be like almost Ferris where they jump on the splitter. Yeah. But like I'm not quite that cool. <laughs> um, yeah, so what else? So also with the front end, ignore this wiring harness, but we went to Pikes Peak two years ago, a year ago? Two years ago, and we had a boost leak after driving like 25 hours, and I was basically like, well, this is like totally unacceptable and never happening to me again. So we replaced all of the silicone with the Vibrant HD clamps, 
Those are HDs, right? Well, that one down there is a V-band. That one's a V-band, but the rest of these, that side of the intercooler... Yeah, we actually did a little development for CES, and you would have the V-band on the turbo On outlet. the turbo, so yeah, was, welded right on the turbo. There is not a single piece of silicone on this entire... Yeah, turbo to intake, there is nothing. It is just all vibrant HD clamps, which is nice because then, like, things can grow and expand still with heat, so there's no need to worry there, but I do keep one fixed V-band at the bottom yeah and this way there's just it can't physically have a boost leak no like if it's... i do there's just a hole somewhere that's like real bad there's no yeah. like doing a worm gear like way down here and like laying down to get to the bottom of the intercooler like i can literally get to everything speaking of top. speaking of cooling system we have the radium expansion tank here too so we did a little custom mods yeah we, had, we took the uh ebay special um oil plate we welded on another bung for the high point of the cooling system. It goes here. We have another one that goes to here, wherever that is. Yeah, so right we, grab, here. we grab hot water off this side of the engine, and then we have the pre-return. So the radium, bottom. it's a basic setup. The only modification we had to do was just the high point, which is just this one. Everything else is just the two from your stock bottle. Um, yeah. And then we're also, we have a cooling level sensor in the bottom so I don't get any lights on the dash or anything like that and then yeah that's a nice solution the overflow for the coolant goes into that bottle this is some race car stuff yeah this is a janky attachment don't judge I'm not Jesus, it, this, this is in progress in progress yeah but we got like the vibrant catch can system all mounted up on the tower now and I have yeah everybody by the way on N54 guys stop overthinking your PCV <laughs> catch can system you guys I thought M54 guys were bad with this, but N54 guys, there's, there's like there's side, like there's a, a two thing. Side. Just vent the thing to atmosphere, please. It's, yeah. it's, it's every real race car in the world. Just use this. I always look back to like the '90s turbo era for yeah. everything. Yeah. Like how did they do it? Because that was like the like technology that we have like that's attainable now. Yeah. A modern, what a modern race team has like this year it was not attainable to what we have. Yeah. So, just when in doubt, just revert back to '90s turbo cars. Yeah. And there's like. It's not confusing. Like you just vent. It's fine. To atmosphere. I don't need the throttle body to pull that much vacuum. No. It's just, just not necessary boost. for this application. Yeah. So all, what else is ready? Uh, we got the cage components, the cage and the crossbar integrated. So basically, we have a bolt there and a bolt down there. So the center crossbar can be removed. So you can remove the dash and the heater core whenever so yeah, the time like comes. One day when I decide to go full full race car, but I mean the stock like steering column it's nice it's just so nice yeah and like could i have like cut out this and like rewilded a bunch of things and made it work probably i think what you did is the but right choice for this like there's no weight savings or play it just adds complication and i just literally welded on two plates and bolted together yeah so. it's perfect um yeah so but the car is a complete wiring shit show right now basically i gotta put the whole dash back in and wire all that and I still have like the auto transmission controller in the back. Ooh, big like, news. We, I don't think anybody even knows. No, we didn't even bring it over. So let's go, uh, should we go should over we and visit go it? teleport? Let's teleport. Cut. Uh, okay, cut. So All the right. original plan was to do a DCT, yes. but... But now we're at 8HP 50. So yes. So my car has been a 6HP, a manual, and now it'll be an 8HP. Yeah. So uh, this one's out of a B58, right? Yes. Yeah. So 2018 four or 340. I mean, it's a 8 HP 50. They came in a bunch of shit. Yeah. Um, so we're going to use the HTG to control this. Yeah. Their new all closed loop control. They have trans brake, eight speeds. I don't really know. It's going to be awesome. I'll just so, be able to hoon like super hardcore. Hoon. I can't wait to see this thing <laughs> launch off the line. So yeah, yeah. we're going to completely stock 8 HP. We're not doing anything to it. We're going to throw everything we got at it and we're going to see what happens. So the crazy people over in Poland, there's like no concern for power or whatever. They make like plenty of jam. Like unless I was making over 700 torque, like it wouldn't be an issue. Yeah. So since I keep torque around like 625 anyway, like I don't have a problem there. And horsepower is not really an issue with these guys. So especially with the 
the HTG controls, like we can control line pressure and all the fancy stuff inside the transmission. So I don't have to worry about like what a stock controller is limiting me to. So exactly. That's like the big problem with a lot of people in the auto now is just the N54 makes a jam and people just make way too much power and the six HP 18 or whatever it is, just 19, whatever. Yeah, yeah. It doesn't really last and it just starts slipping and then you just end up into this crazy rebuild, yeah. but HCG solved that issue. So the controller, so we also started working with Adamat. So the original plan was to run the DCT yes. on the N54, which you have a six bolt flywheel, right? No, you have an eight. Yes, so I have an eight. The, the 335 IS is the only N54 that came with a DCT and it has an eight bolt flywheel. So, but they're super hard to get like $1,500. So we were like, Adamat, you make a sprung hub flywheel for the everything else we do. Can you please make a kit for the 135i so it can run an N54 and an inline six DCT. He says, sure. So they're on the way. So we have an adapter set for anybody who wants to run an N54 with a sprung hub with an eight bolt engine. But yes. on top of that, plans change. Yes. We also had them make a B58, a 8HP bell housing adapter to N54. So we're gonna relocate the starter back to this side because uh, the starter on the B58 is like in the oil pan essentially. It's kind of weird. Yeah, I don't know why they put it down there. It would just be kind of a pain in the ass for the downpipes and everything like that. So we just asked Adam out to relocate it to the top where yeah. the normal starter goes anyway. So we'll get we'll have that probably like next week. Yeah, I mean, yeah, I'm hoping that by then we'll have the cage and we'll be driving and then I will this will be this is like a one day swap basically like everything is like yeah all we need already to... done we're like we're not reinventing the wheel here no like, we're what? just connecting the can and we're connecting to tps and that's all we're doing yeah so uh, stock ecu still no changes there and then we'll run hcg for this so i can't wait this is going to be a huge thing for n54 guys coming soon especially drag guys well i mean look at the fast guys even time attack and drag like yeah. the eight speeds are doing great on track and yeah. the eight speeds are shifting almost as fast as dcts and the dcts are becoming a little rare, a little hard to get, and the ADHD is a little bit more attainable now. So, uh, I mean, I think a great option. We're gonna put one in my dad's LS El Camino for drag racing. We have adapters on the way too for ADHP to LS, um, and that is for a Dodge-based uh, yeah. ADHP, which are even easier to get. So that's pretty exciting. More power. Yeah, so like these- Dodge ones are really badass. Like, I mean- This will hold a thousand horsepower. It was 600 yeah. bucks, like, let's go. Literally, it's just huge, so it doesn't fit in. No, you'd never fit your down I couldn't, I couldn't fit anything. So. Yeah, so we, we went tried, to tried, the... but so we opted for the BMW version. Yeah. This is basically the same transmission that's in the Supra. Like it's an 8HP 50, like they got a 51. Yeah, it's like slight and up changes. HP's doing all their gems, whether you get a 50, 55, 51 nowadays, who knows? They can't count. So. Yeah, we have a little collection <laughs> over here. That's the 8HP 45, DSG, Dodge, Dodge, Dodge. The yeah, yeah, yeah. 135 IDCT, and then back to the B58 HP. And uh, yeah. I, Big things to come. Yeah, don't blame us when there's no transmissions left. It was, actually, you probably could blame us. Yeah. Supply well, and demand. Yeah, I don't know. <laughs> like, uh, it's like there's how many fish in the sea? You just gotta. One person's not gonna mess up the whole supply. No. But uh, I'm excited. Yeah, I can't wait. It's gonna be sick. I'm gonna actually be able to launch the car for like. I just gonna. I can't wait to see. We, 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 have to, we can't do much of a drag pack setup because your rear brakes are so huge. The 370 millimeters. Yeah. So uh, it's gonna be pretty entertaining to see it launch on those new 295s you got though. Yeah. The, the Falcon 660. Are they on? No, we took them off for product photos. Oh. Or did I put them back on? No. That's just a single dual caliper. Yeah. Oh well. Anyway though. The car is coming along for sure. Yeah, I'm hacking the living crap out of it. Oh yeah, look at this. We got air vents that are gonna be looking sweet. We even have air extraction on the backside, so it's not even just like a sheet metal thing. It's gonna actually vent out the air. To, Cause that's one of the biggest drag creators yeah, in a race car. Yeah, the wheels create so much. It's such a high pressure zone in the wheel well, so that's why all the race cars, I mean, basically just cut out squares on the top and they're just like, don't have to look fancy. Yeah. I wanted a more, I mean, I'll paint the back or clean it up. Once it's wrapped, it, it will be more seamless, but no one makes cool stuff for the 1M because they just, it was such a limited production. So, you know, the E92 M3 guys got like the DTM fiber works and stuff like that, where it's like a nice carbon. I think piece this is like the best out, fender. Like, this is like, that's the best fender BMW made. It, just, yeah. I'm getting oh, yeah. pretty good with the Dremel. Yeah, you're Dremel and you clean them up a little bit and you know, get a wrap. I, I get to keep the side markers and everything. Like they're in there. Yeah, it's going to be, going it's going to be pretty awesome. It's definitely going to look at it. And the car is getting wrapped orange, right? Yes. So all the lovers of the red and the gray, we love you. Yes. But we're, we're gonna, it's going to be orange. Uh, it's going to be orange. 
And uh, I think it's going to look pretty sweet. Yes. He's currently the Orca. It is the Orca right now. I don't know why we picked I think we just, I think we just bought. We just I, well, I think thinking, we just bought Primer. Like, yeah. we just didn't link the... I didn't think of the repercussions down the road. Yeah, so this is when we did the wide body thing yeah. at... Uh, at his old, at Chris's old apartment, and in the like parking single, lot. Yeah, we did it actually in the parking lot because we barely had any room in the garage. I think your car was in the garage. Yeah. So uh, yeah, a little update on the 135. It's looking so good. Yeah. This whole front end system is just like the coolest thing ever. I can't wait to get the carbon brake ducts going in. I'm just glad the intercooler is not held by like two little plastic screws anymore. It is crazy how the fact because that thing is not light. That weighs like way too much yeah. and it's literally held in with two sheet metal screws into a plastic thing from the very bottom and it's, it's nuts like, uh, how do you torque that and you know, now we like, have real stuff of course the cnr coolers we're gonna brace those cooler brackets a little bit more for sure and uh run the yeah, hoses gonna try and go like the top and add a bottom one just to yeah she's gonna be really missed. stiffen her up then but, uh, jump all the curbs you want and just have her be fine. I'm excited. This just came out awesome. Yeah, exactly. The, I'm going to need Tanner to come over and like make my headlights like look acceptable because... She's a little foggy. She's a little bit, but that's what you get for used headlights. So yeah. I really complain. But they're the LCI, so I got eyebrows now. I'm fancy. Jeez. But uh, yeah, it's looking like a car, so today's a good day. Just got to continue to slap some things together. I got the AC delete belt in there, so like... Don't have AC anymore. Freaking mods, dude. Yeah. Which is like. Is that still not around something? No, it's got the tensioner pin in there. I just. Oh, I was like, wasn't gonna that do looks it loose. <laughs> no, this is this is OEM tension right here. Oh, dude, that's mint. That's this what the Honda. The, my, my Honda Fit made so much noise until we tightened the belt like <laughs> way too tight, and yeah. this is well, fine. Yeah, weird tensioner. This one, at least, you just pull the pin, and it's like eye tension for you. Yeah. But. Well, super Shrek. Yeah, that's an update. It's a good day. Car catch up. It. It's uh, car catch ups, yes. That's what Mike's calling it. Yeah. And well, yeah, hopefully I, the people are too. It's not just me. The people. And then um, I think this one, all we gotta do right now is uh, waiting for two little pieces for the engine to come. Then we're gonna put the uh, M52 DCT adapter on and show you guys how the new sprung hub systems work from Adamat. It's really a lot better on the clutch baskets with the DCTs. Then we'll throw it back in the car and hopefully start her up pretty dang soon. We're almost gonna have running cars. It's like getting warm out. Yeah, Grid can't life's wait. in a month. I know. We're, we're, time flies way too fast. <laughs> for us, for Chris and I, time has been moving in warp speed and we can't do anything about it. Oh, I, I God, think we're going to so be like 90 good. years old before we know it. This is what happens to people. You work like 80 hours and you're just like, how did I do this? How did I pack boxes for so long? Today? Yeah, but I'm excited. We got this super cool valve cover on here. I'm just waiting on the exhaust studs to come in so I can get the turbo ski on there so we can get her back ready to go in the car. Yeah. Cut. Cut. That was good. Got yeah. It. Uh, it's almost like we can YouTube now. Yeah, keep watching us. We're gonna have some cool stuff coming. Yeah, I appreciate you guys watching. We're always doing dumb shit. And then just, you know, we almost suck less at YouTube now, so if you like- We're getting better. Let us comment, know. Comment, subscribe, do all that cool shit that I'm supposed to tell you to do every time that I kind of forget to do, because like, you don't want to be the annoying person that's like, like, comment, subscribe on my videos. Get the stats. I need to get the stats. <laughs> oh. But also like, it helps so much that you're just like, I get why people say it. I, and then I guess a little outro, a little info, to, well, you're probably gonna see the subscribe pictures and stuff pop up pretty soon. But uh, we got this little Mugen, what is this thing? I don't know. Uh, I forget, I think it's an Integra, I it's think. It's Integra something or something. I'm not a Honda guy, my little brother could tell you exactly all yeah, the little details about it. Our buddy Brian got it for a pretty good price. So he's like, we're trying to convince him to turn it into a track car, but it's uh, an unknown he, status with some Type R stuff that, again, I don't understand. I think he should remove all but the fancy like parts. There's like four mats that say Type him to race R car. from Japan, and apparently it's worth a bajillion dollars. Yeah, who knows? This thing's kind of weird. We're just checking it out. Yeah, we're just, this is... We're babysitting it. <laughs> we are babysitting it. Just push it around. Yeah. All right, catch you guys soon. All right, catch you in the next one. Peace. Peace.